allow me, if you will, to be vulnerable with you guys in this video. And I hope at the end of this video, you get inspired and not scared of relocating to a new country and starting all over again. This by no means says or means that this is going to be your experience or you would have a similar experience when you relocate to a new country. We've all got different lives and we've all got different journeys but i'm just going to say this to actually kind of prepare your mind for what is to come just in case you are planning on relocating to a new country just so that, that you can better plan ahead please i wasn't told most of this <laughs> before i came here so it's good you're watching this just so that you can learn i'm sure you must have heard some of these things i'm going to say but I'll say them anyways. Just before we go into the video, um, my name is Ruth. You can call me Rayuna and welcome to Rayuna Space. And straight into the video, you see those people that actually relocate to a new country and come online to probably start crying, saying they are frustrated, they are being depressed and all. I could tell you for a fact that most of them are not just content they are real they are true and you read through the comments of those videos and you see things like if you are if you are frustrated come back to your country who is holding you what's holding you who's chasing you out of your country and the rest and i can tell you for a fact that 90 percent of those people putting those comments those type of comments in those type of videos they have no idea what it is or what it takes to travel to another country and start all over again Imagine you a CEO in your company back in your own country, traveling to a new country and starting from scratch again. It's a whole lot. It is mentally draining. Well, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. So this time last year, I came online here. I came on here to tell you guys with all the excitement that I moved to a new country. I moved to the UK, I moved to Nigeria. You know that idea of, oh, if you, want, if you can travel out of the country, then you are richer or better than your peers or your friends that are still back in, your country, in, their, in the country. It's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. Pass forward to the first day we landed in the UK. We came here and then we came straight to Scotland because that's, this was where we are coming to actually, not England. And then, I'm just going to talk about my own journey, not my husband's. So, this is just going to be my own journey. And then, I didn't have an accommodation. My husband was a student, so he had already booked his student um, accommodation from Nigeria. We actually didn't know. We're thinking that it's like a Nigerian hostel school accommodation that when you book the accommodation, you can leave anytime you like. No, Here, you must finish your contract with them. So that affected us a whole lot. And coming to the UK here, you have to read every, you have to read between the lines when you have to sign a contract with them, because they're going to refer you back to every single words they said in that contract if you want to breach the contract or something. So I started looking for an apartment for myself to stay. And if you're coming here for the first time and you don't have a history, like a credit history or residential history or address history so to speak here it's going to be hard to get an apartment for yourself especially if you don't have someone here so it's better you probably just stay with a friend or something so i moved in with um some of my friends some people and um i'm not going to talk about <laughs> my experience in that place but it wasn't bad but it wasn't good it wasn't good but it wasn't bad it wasn't terrible, so to speak, but I started trying because before I came here, I had already finished my course in UI UX designing. So I was like, oh, tech, once I come here, this country, I'm going to get my tech job. Things are going to be easy. And all. I started applying for tech jobs. The first month, 
nothing and here everything you pay for almost everything you pay for is monthly it's not like back in nigeria that you have to pay your house rent um per year here your rent is monthly your bills monthly everything is monthly so if you don't have a job or if you don't get a job you are done for we got so good we had some change we brought from nigeria so that was what we're spending depending on when we got a job first month applying for ui ux jobs tech jobs i couldn't get any but i was still excited oh i'm in the uk <laughs> the second month then i had already moved in with with the friends and of course you have to contribute because you can't stay in the house in the house for free nothing here is free the second month nothing it's not as if i wasn't seeing the jobs i was applying in the right sites i was applying but everything was coming back unfortunately we couldn't give you the job and the sad thing about it is that if you don't have a job in a uk experience in your cv if you don't have a uk experience uk job experience in your cv it's going to be very hard getting your first job except you have some kind of connection or you have someone that's going to connect you if not <laughs> prepare for the battle it's not going to be easy so but it's not always like that because i actually met someone that got a job the second day we got here the second day after i got here so it's not always like that the third month i was already getting tired and i was like okay what do i do and then the friends i was staying with they started advising me oh start applying for many jobs you can't keep applying for tech jobs it's not gonna be easy to get around here start with many jobs first then over time you can go into tech then at first i was like many job <laughs> you hold me me that was a business woman in nigeria and all the stuff i like be doing a job but I needed to pay bills and all so i started with many jobs i applied for a cleaning job and i got it and that was my first job here in the uk and it was like i i i found gold because it was it wasn't easy staying three months without getting a job wasn't easy so i got the job and boy it was three three hours a day mondays to fridays and it was in the school so i was basically going to clean a school so i was the cleaner in the school so you basically go early in the morning as early as 5 36 go clean the school clean the cleaning here is is brutal because you have to clean a whole lot of things i think i was i'm going to show you guys a video i have i saved the video because i thought i i said i was going to when i eventually make it big in this country i'm going to post that video again so this was my, me washing the toilets like i was washing roughly eight to ten toilets every day cleaning a big hallway and cleaning so many things and my friends back in nigeria they didn't know what i was doing but most of them were in my dm they were like send me money they are now a big guest send me money send me i was barely surviving we were barely surviving because my husband had not gotten a job then we we're barely surviving so i started doing the job and bore it wasn't i needed money like i was earning i was earning barely what i could survive with it wasn't even sustainable so i started applying for other jobs then i got um uh, a message from one of the ones i applied for it was a factory job yeah i've never done factory job in my life before it was a factory job so when i got the job it was more it was gonna be a full-time job i was asked to come for an interview so the date I was given to go for an interview was the date I was doing my, one of the days I was doing my cleaning job. So I did not, I, I actually thought I got the factory job already. So I didn't take permission from my place of work where I was cleaning. I just went for the interview. I was like, okay, if I don't get the job, the next um, day, next working day, which was going to be a Monday, I was going to tell them that I fell ill and that's why I couldn't show up on Friday. So I went for the interview. I'd already gone past the interview. I was we've done induction. It was time for us to start. And then I was called and told that they did not accept me. Yes, they are very sorry. 
I almost cried. I was on the road that age. I was just walking around thinking about my life. And if you know Scotland, you know Scotland is very cold. Scotland is the coldest part of the UK. And we're in winter then. So I was just walking around, tearing up, calling my siblings, trying to explain to them that I'm getting frustrated. And it's just roughly three months in, into the relocation. Then I went back to my place of work on Monday, the next Monday. And they told me they had already replaced me with someone else. I came back home. I started crying. I started crying. I I wept. I was confused because I know that job was not paying well, but that was the only hope I had at the time. Where was I going to start from? Then I started applying for jobs again. At a point, I needed to like pay part of the rent of where I was staying with my friends. I had to beg them that, okay, there was no money at hand at the moment. And I was thinking, okay, they were going to understand because, okay, I've been there with you guys for some time. They were like, no, you must look for a way to get that money. You must get it and pay. I sorted that one out though, but I started looking for a job. Applied, 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 got frustrated. Then, <clears throat> luckily, I found an agency that um, gives um, factory jobs. I applied with them, registered with them, and I got a factory job. That was one of the most brutal jobs I've ever done in my life. So I went to resume the job. The first day, <clears throat> I... I don't know if you if if you guys know how hot bakeries are. It was a bakery, a very big bakery. They don't have small companies here, so it's it, it was a gigantic bakery, and we we're just in one section. So the first section I started was where you'll be turning the bread, you'll be turning it on the hot, very hot machine. You're going to be using your hand to be turning the bread. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's it's not bread. It's something that looks like bread, but it's something like bread. You're turning it with your hand. After that, they will move you to it in another section where you do something else. After that, if they notice that work is finished, they will move, move you to another section. And we're going to do that for roughly eight hours, non-stop. Then I think you have, we had a 20-minute break or 30-minute break. The first day I did that job, I wanted to die. I go back home, I, I was crying. But I was like, okay, if I stop the job, where will I go from here? Because Nobody is here to help you. Like nobody is saying, nobody is going going to tell you here that. Oh, I have spare fifty pounds. Collect. <clears throat> I have spare hundred pounds. Come and take. Nobody. Everybody here is trying to survive, at least for the most part. I know. So, I went on with the job. I continued while still applying for other jobs. Then, I got um, invited for interviews. Same thing happened. I went for one of the interviews and I was while well, I was supposed to go to work and I didn't get the job the inter for the interview and the interview I went for, then I lost the bakery job I already had. I became more frustrated. At that point, I was already telling my husband, I want to go back to Nigeria. <laughs> I want to go back to Nigeria. I'm tired. I can't cope any longer. I was, we were doing fine in Nigeria. We're doing fine. So, what happened? Where did that thought of, okay, let's relocate to a new country come from? What were we thinking? What were we, what were we expecting then? Those thoughts of regrets started coming. I was like, she would have just, we would have just stayed back where we were. Eh? I was doing my business. My business was paying. Oh, what was I looking for? I got really frustrated then. I was literally waking up with tears in my eyes, going to sleep with tears in my eyes. It wasn't easy. It, it sounds easy the way I'm saying it, but it wasn't easy. Then I kept applying. I reached out to the people I could reach out to. I continued applying. I applied to agencies. I applied to no many, too many jobs. If you had seen my email then, the only things you'll be seeing on my email was, unfortunately, 
unfortunately 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 we can't offer you this job unfortunately oh due to so 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 and so we can't offer you this job at this moment then i think one of the i so many people advised me that prayer say oh change your cv to this oh do this put this in your cv put it don't put this in your cv put this in your cv don't put it put this in your cv I, I shall follow all the advice. I tried I tried my best and at that point I was already calling my parents at home. I was already calling my siblings at home. I was already telling them that okay, I think I want to come back home. I I can't cope any longer. I would have just stayed back in Nigeria doing what I was doing or or even moved to Abuja and or maybe because I grew up in Lagos almost all my life. So Lagos was not part of my plan, safe. So I kept applying and um for the most part when you apply you are asked to um do a video interview do do some assessments and all those stuff at a point i was like okay i'll just apply we if they ask for assessment i'll just i'll forget about it I'm, i'll just apply to the next one i stumbled upon one um bank application for customer service I have always been told, most of my friends have been telling me, okay, start applying for care work, support work, and the rest. I was applying still, but deep down within me, that's not what I wanted. I don't want to do anything that has to do with caring or supporting anybody. I didn't, actually. I might change my mind, but I didn't. So, I, stopped, I stumbled upon one bank job, and I applied and instead of seeing the unfortunately that I was already used to, they said, okay, you've passed the first stage. Let's go on to the next stage. You have to do a video interview. You have to do some, take some assessment and the rest. I took the assessment, but the video interview, I was so reluctant because I was, I'd already told myself, okay, I will not, they, they, they are not going to give me the job. So, because I don't even have experience in any bank job. They, were, they kept sending me a reminder, do the video interview, do the video interview, do the video assessment. Then on the last day, I just started to reluctantly do it. The way I even did the video interview itself, I was so reluctant because I thought I was not going to get the job. I I was, I was didn't I didn't even put in more effort. But I did it and the next day, I got an email from them that congratulations you've gotten the job i was like oh okay how so they're like congratulations you've gotten the job but we'll have to do some check-ins on you which is normal they have to check you to make sure you don't have any criminal records criminal history and all those stuff it's very normal but you are not starting immediately you're going to start in the next three months by that time we would have been done with your your, your check-ins and all very okay but i still needed to survive those three months before starting the job then i started looking for other things to do looking for other jobs to do and then i found another factory job which was very far from my house but that was the only thing I could do at that moment. I started working. So basically, it's I I was given an evening shift. So you basically go to work around 4. 4 to 12.30. 12.30, you're done. You have to go back home. And where the factory was, or where the factory is, there is no transport by that time. You have to find your way home either by hiring a cab or something. So at the point, I actually got used to it. We started taking cab. Sometimes I'll get home 3 a.m., 4 a.m. I'll manageably sleep. And where I was staying with those people I was staying with, they were not using, they were, they were not owning the heater. So I was coming back to cold, very cold um, room, manageably bathe and sleep. And if I have something to eat, I'll eat. If I don't have, I'll sleep like that till I wake up and go for my shift again, 
we call it shift here. Yeah. <laughs> so I started doing the job and I worked and worked and worked and never in my life did I imagine I could do a factory job for such a long time. But I did and they even they got to know me in the company. I did and at that point I stopped crying because I was like, okay, I, I've gotten a job already. I just need this one to sustain myself, depending on when I start the bank job. I did, and it was time to start the bank job. I started the bank job, and that's what we are doing till now. It's not perfect. We are not where we want to be yet. I personally am not where I want to be yet, but... I'm just so grateful to God that though it's not been an easy journey, it sounds so simple saying it, but it's been one, one heaven of a ride. Let me put it that way. At a point, I I stopped going to church because I was frustrated. I was like, okay, God, you were the one that brought us here. You, you granted us the visa. You brought us here. So what is happening? I got frustrated. You know, there's, there are some things that would happen to you and you start thinking okay god did you abandon me then you 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 are like okay you want to you think you want to punish god you say okay i'm not going to church i'm not doing this you're actually punishing yourself i stopped going to church i i i got so i got so pissed but i'm grateful to god that despite all that he remained faithful it's not been easy it's just one year, yeah, and the higher you go, the tougher it gets. That's the funny part. It's the tougher it gets because there's still a whole, a whole lot of things you have to do. There's, there's still a whole lot of things you have to pay for and the rest, but we thank God for everything. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just wanting to put this video out there to encourage you guys that want to that's looking to relocate to a new country that you have no one or you know no one there it might be rough it's gonna get rough at the beginning trust me it's more like you're start starting from scratch remember i used to remember one illustration i was always telling my sister back then when i was trying to get a job she i was always telling her this is more like planting a beans when you plant a beans it goes into the soil and dies. It literally dies. Then a few days later, you start seeing the leaf sprouting out of that dead bean, dead beans, growing, growing, then forming branches, then producing new beans. So it's more like you are from your wonderful life you are coming here to start from scratch you are, you, are, you are coming here to get buried into the sand first and then over time you start flourishing and sprouting so I, I, I just hope this video inspires and encourage you to no matter what you pass you go through when you have just relocated just keep pushing I'm not where I want to be yet but it's a step in the right direction and it's not been easy it has not been easy i literally told myself i was not going to cry while making this video but it's it's not been easy there was almost there was a time that we were almost homeless i was almost almost homeless and right here in this country you can't even be homeless the weather here is bad you are just going to die <laughs> we thank god for everything guys if you like this video and if this video was helpful and inspiring do well to give it a thumbs up a huge one and hit the subscribe button if you haven't and hit the notification bell also to get notified when i post my new videos i'm sure i'm, I'm going to see you in my next video